What's up everyone? We're back with more Pico CTF 2022 reverse engineering challenges. The title of today's challenge is GDB test drive. So the description reads, can you get the flag? Download this binary and here's the test drive instructions. The dollar sign just means the command prompt. That's not something that we're actually going to enter. And then it has several commands to run. So we'll be walking through these one by one. I'll explain what each one does. And then if you stick around, I'll give some pro tips and tricks. Set off, right click, copy the link, go to our terminal. And I like to download it with wget. It's just quick and easy, ls.la. All right, we see the file, gdb me. The first command, here, let me do this. Let me move this to the right, move that to the left, and resize everything. So the first command is chmod plus x gdb. So this command, if I do that ls tech la again. So these are the permissions on the far left. This is what we have access to, r and w. That means we can read and write the file since we are the Kali user. In the middle is for the group user, so everyone who's in the Kali group, which is just me, this is my username and my group ID, and everyone else can just read it. So essentially, all we care about for today is our current user, we can read and we can write it, but we cannot execute it. So if I try to run this file, well, I spelled it wrong. I try to run it, I get permission denied. It is not executable. So change mod, change the mode to add executable to it. Now, smashing up arrow to go back through my command history, and up and down to cycle through your commands. Now I can run it, right? It doesn't do anything. It just hangs because the next command is gdb, the GNU debugger, and then me, and then the name of the file, gdb, and then gdb me. That sounds like a tongue twister. So you can do tac tac help, and it'll print out all the different command line flags, the syntax, what GDB is. So GDB, and then the optional arguments you want to give to it, and then the name of the file. My favorite command, or flag I guess, to give to it is Q, or quiet, or silent. These all do the same thing. It won't print a bunch of version number info. So I'm going to run it as it says here, without the tech queue, and you see at the top it prints what version of GDB this is, this is 12.1, which is the most up-to-date version that came out May 1st of this year. Some copyright information, saying this is free software, and then no debugging symbols found. So I don't really like having all this all the time. So I'm going to quit out of this. Now GDB me tag Q. You see all that is gone. Oh, ran the wrong command. So GDB tag Q. GDB me. So all that copyright information and version number is gone. No debugging symbols found. Layout assembly so we get the assembly code instructions this is what is called AT&T syntax we can tell because it has percents in front of it the percent symbol and I think this is very ugly I would much rather use Intel syntax so set disassembly flavor Intel and we see that it changed the percent signs are gone and the layout is a little bit different. I think this is much cleaner and easier to read. The next command, it says is breakpoint on main plus 99. So this is the main function. And scrolling down, this is main plus 99. It's a call to sleep. So let me open up a new terminal. Or actually I can do this here. Man, sleep open up the manual page, click on the first link, 
And we get the description, sleep for a specified number of seconds. It only takes one argument, which is how long you want it to sleep, and it just hangs, it waits, it pauses. So where do we think the number of seconds are that are being passed to the sleep function? It is right here, it's this hex value. Can I print this in decimal with GDB? Let's say print this, does that work? Yeah, so that's what, 100,000? So it's pausing for 100,000 seconds. So let me open up a new terminal. Ooh, that's super tiny. Zoom in, Python, paste that in. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Let's paste this value in there. And we get, yeah, 100,000. So it waits for 100,000 seconds. So that's why when we ran, let's then go to the file. Pico. That's why when we run it, it just doesn't do anything. That's because the sleep function is being called. So it wants us to set a breakpoint here. So break star main plus 99, wrap that in parentheses, hit enter. And now we want to run run to run the program. And we see that starting program breakpoint one at this address in main. And we see now there's a capital B and an arrow pointing to where we are stopped. What's the next function? What does it want us to do after this? Run, we did that. Now jump to main plus 104. We can peek um, so we don't want to call the sleep function yet, right? We paused. We did not execute this yet. We want to jump over it. We want to skip it. J-U-M-P, jump, main plus 104. When I hit enter, we see that we are now here. Okay, so I jumped over it, and it looks like it just continued to execute the remaining code. So you can see the function calls f put string, formatted print string, right? Prints a character, o, x, a. That's the hex value for the new line, so it prints a new line, it calls free. So it printed out our uh, flag. We, we can see that here. All right, that was pretty simple. All we had to do was follow the instructions exactly as they were laid out here. So when we first opened this file, the syntax was AT&T um, flavor, right? Just as a reminder, see, just as a reminder, this is AT&T syntax. I prefer Intel, and if you do not want to run set disassembly flavor Intel every single time you open up GDB, you can add it to your GDB init file. And it will look just like this. I'm opening it up in the Vim text editor, because that's what I prefer. You want to put it in your home directory, that's what the tilde means, and then dot gdb init. Enter. We have a little comment. Uh, use Intel syntax. And then set disassembly favor. Intel. Save and exit. Now, if I were to rerun this, layout. ASM. Ooh, interesting. Oh, I spelled this assembly wrong. Save, exit, rerun it. Layout ASM. Now it's an in Intel. Cool. All right, guys, uh, there you have it. That's how I solved this challenge, this walkthrough. Um, let me know in the comments below if you found a different way to do it, even though the steps are laid out right here. You know, they're pretty easy to follow. Let me know if you found something more creative or if you have any cool GDB tricks. Take it easy and see you guys in the next video.